I'm going to demonstrate how our cell phones are increasing our risk of dementia tenfold. And this is why dementia cases are doubling and will continue to double. And what's most important, what you can do about it. Yes, you read the title correctly, cell phones are shrinking our brains. Let's start with memory and how it changes with cell phone use. Our memory is the first thing affected, often the first symptom of Alzheimer's dementia. In the good old days, we had to memorize all our friends' phone numbers. I still remember the landlines of my friends I had back in eighth grade. And think GPS. We used to have one of those Smith maps or write down directions and we had to know the streets to get our destination. Versus now, we type in an address and let the voice guide you there. An interesting study out of London, cab drivers before they are drivers have to study and memorize city streets for four years to be able to get the job and do it well. The study looked at brain scans before and after and found that memorizing 25,000 city streets grows the brain, specifically the hippocampus. The hippocampus is the memory center of the brain but also aids in learning and processing of emotions. All that memorization and you are literally exercising your hippocampus. Today we rely heavily on our devices to remind us of things too. These digital calendars, the seemingly constant notifications popping up throughout the day. We aren't using our memory. There have been several studies that suggest this isn't such a good thing, with results pointing to excessive smartphone and a reduction in the size of the hippocampus, especially in young children's brain. And a meta-analysis looking at brain scans of chronic smartphone users and found they have lower gray matter volumes in specific regions of the brain. Less gray matter typically means more risk of depression and mental health disorders like schizophrenia and dementia. The less we use our mind, the greater the risk of brain diseases, period. To combat the loss of gray matter, regular exercise has been shown to increase it and improve memory. Another thing you can do, try to remember directions to places when possible and put that GPS away. Something else we need to think about, we often think we can multitask. I've caught myself saying I am so good at multitasking, I can do so many things at once, but only 2.5% of the population can multitask effectively. How often are you sitting on the couch watching TV and scrolling? through your phone. A lot, right? Trying to consistently multitask can hinder your ability to think deeply and form complex thoughts. It can also create a false sense of urgency, like you always have to be doing something. This hinders our brain's ability to transfer information into our long-term storage, affecting our ability to accumulate memories. That's scary. Do me a favor, if you like this kind of information, hit that like and subscribe button. I believe more people need to hear this. Also, comment below on what are some other things we used to do to work our brains out that we don't happen to do anymore because of cell phones. How about addiction? Nomophobia is the fear of being away from one's phone. The average amount of screen time in the world is 3 hours and 46 minutes a day, a 23% increase from 2019. The average person checks their phone 96 times per day. Excessive smartphone use is presenting very similar to addiction, such as failure to resist use, withdrawal, continuation of use, even knowing how bad it is for us, lying about use frequency. How will this unfold? What will be the consequences? There's casino-like features like the pull to refresh, mimic the pulling of the arm on a slot machine, anticipating rewards which triggers a dopamine response, and infinite scrolling and autoplay that lull you into mindless behavior. Let's talk about cognitive function and how the brain changes. A 2022 study found that our reading comprehension declines when we read from a screen even if the text looks the same as it would appear on paper. And the mere presence of your smartphone in the same room as you alters your ability to focus, remember, and solve problems. Researchers refer to this as brain drain. It happens because our brain has a limited capacity to process information. We have to prioritize what we focus on. When our phone is nearby, it competes for our brain attention and it must work extra hard to resist the temptation to pick it up, which sabotages our concentration on other tasks. And stress. Let's talk about those constant notifications I mentioned. Smartphone notifications have turned us into Pavlov's dogs, training our brains to be in constant state of fear and stress. Constant notifications overwhelm our prefrontal cortex, our decision-making center. Too many decisions and too much stimulus, and it shuts down. The amygdala then takes over, which induces a state of stress and panic. Back in 2008, a researcher out of UCLA by the name of Gary Small posted a question, is technology rewiring our brains? His research pointed out that when the brain spends more time on technology-related tasks and less time exposed to other people, it drifts away from fundamental social skills like reading facial expressions during conversations and reading nonverbal cues, and it weakens the circuits needed for in-person interaction. He then hypothesized that this social disconnect would lead to social awkwardness, isolation, 
education and less interest in traditional classroom learning. Look at where we are right now. I'd say he was spot on. And do me a favor, Google, are smartphones making you dumber? And you end up with a whole host of different news articles and research and something else extremely important to understand. Social interaction is the most cognitively complex thing our brains do. And all this new technology seemingly is designed to take us away from this extremely important activity. Social relationships are vital, not only for our brains, but also for our happiness and physical health too. So I hope by now I've painted the vivid and deleterious picture of how our cell phones are harming our brains. That's some scary shit, right? Now, I don't think anyone would disagree. Smartphones are also an amazing technology, something so small that can do so much. And many of us, they've become seemingly indispensable, like a fifth limb. But at what price? A study from the National Library of Medicine noted the mere presence of a smartphone reduces basal attentional performance and destroys cognitive functioning, which is the ability to recognize and differentiate between stimuli. We become less aware. I remember when the first iPhone was introduced in 2007. Oh, what a glorious day it was. It was a combination of a mobile phone mixed with an iPod and portable internet with no buttons, just a touchscreen. It had 16 apps. That was it. 16. No app store to download more apps. The touchscreen was amazing. Now you could scroll, swipe, enlarge, and make small with the touch of your fingers, making the smartphone much easier to use than a desktop computer. And with each new year and the next new iPhone came exponential improvements in the technology. And before we knew it, we got sucked into a totally different reality. Big tech began designing algorithms to keep us on our phones, to keep our intention, and applications designed to trigger those sought after dopamine releases in your brain. Sounds kind of scary when I described it like that, right? Ever see the Netflix show, The Social Dilemma? That was terrifying to me, and it did a great job of portraying how algorithms rule our lives. The people that created these algorithms knew what they were doing, and many actually feel quite remorseful for their part in this creation still today. Measuring physiological changes from smartphone use is is a challenge. It's not as simple as scanning the brain and seeing differences from one scan to the next. The morphological changes to our brains may take years or even generations, but what I think we are all familiar with is the feeling of losing our cell phone, the complete panic, life is over, what are we going to do? Or not having been on our phones for an extended period of time, that draw and magnetism to bring us back in, unlock our phones and see if anything is awaiting us. Most of these problems seem to come from social media. All these social media platforms are expertly engineered, created to elicit feedback, responses, comments, and likes, just like I'm trying to do right now, which in turn causes the brain to release dopamine. These are called feedback loops, and they exist everywhere. Video games and social networking sites are designed to get you to react. Then you become addicted to those likes, to those responses and feedback. You become disconnected from the real world, and you change. But it's not all bad. There is some interesting research that demonstrate about 30 minutes a day of social media is actually beneficial. When you start to go over an hour, it starts to show harmful effects. And herein lies what I believe can have the most impact and what will give us the most benefits. We need boundaries, we need limitations, we need rules. As I noted, anything over an hour in cell phone use may become harmful. So set your timers and set your phones down when the time is up. I hope you enjoyed this discussion today and got something out of it. Remember to hit that like button and subscribe. Nurse Chris out.